What is going on, everyone? My name's Boyt, and I'm back with some more Age of Mythology. The Titans action spawning in the left side of the map in the red color, playing as Uranus. His name is Scardi. His opponent today in the blue color, also playing as Uranus. His name is Nullus. The map. The map is Blue Lagoon. This game number three of this best of three for the Champions League semi-finals. I'm just running the prediction for the chat right now as we're good to go. So far, Scardi has played two incredibly top-notch games this series. Nullis has not been able to find the win with Odin against Aranos, as we're seeing another Aranos pick from Scardi, but surprisingly an Aranos pick from Nullis. This is um this is surprising for several reasons. Like I'm pretty sure Nullis really, really likes his haters against Aranos, but um, he might not feel like he might not feel safe picking Hades now that Scardi has just absolutely broken Nullis's kind of how you say it. Not he hasn't broken Nullis's mental, so to speak, with that Poseidon game, but he would have shattered the like theory behind what Nullis is doing. And the reason why Nullis has been winning so hard, so well, has been what I've just noticed, and I've just noticed in that last game, economic greed is Nullis's number one game plan in these uh in these games. And he's obviously learned it from Chemo a while back. And he's applied it to the Hades. And he's applied it to the Odin. It's economic greed. And that's how he's going for the wins. But in that last game, economic greed not going to work. As he gets rushed with the Ares. And Scotty is just... Scotty is arguably one of the best aggressive players uh, in Asian mythology at the moment. There is no doubt in my mind that Scardi is one of the best aggressive players here. He does not play uh, a boomy game all too often. And I don't think we're going to see a boomy game here in this uh, in this Uranus war. I'm pretty sure we saw an Uranus mirror with Scardi and Mariano. Correct me if I'm wrong with that. And it was an absolutely insane series. A series with Hero Citizen rushing into the battle. Absolutely insane. And we'll see how it's going to go. But Nullis Hip, I haven't seen his Aranus all too much. I'm not going to lie. Obviously, he can play an Aranus. Pretty much every player in the top 10 has got a mean Aranus. And they will have played plenty. Plenty of Aranus mirrors. As we see Scardi hitting Prometheus. And Nullis also hitting Prometheus here. Uh, as no delay in that advance time. No problems here on a... And a map like Blue Lagoon with three giraffes. I believe both players had three giraffes here. Or maybe it was... Yeah, I think both players had three giraffes. So no problems getting to the second age. The question is going to be, will Nullis continue with his economic greed here? And Hand Axe is coming through for Nullis. I already kind of know that Scardi doesn't like to get himself the upgrades in the Uranus mirror with an effort, uh, more of a focus on getting that early game advantage with units coming out rather than the economic upgrades. If you think about it, two villages on uh, two villages on wood with a hand axe, which is kind of what Scardi's got at the moment, or Nullis has got at the moment, as he's got in his, pick, his hand axe, is kind of worth, uh, you kind of now have got 2.2 villages on wood which doesn't end up being a, a huge amount of resources to be put behind. It takes a while for that hand axe to pay itself off in wood. And that's kind of the theory here. Ascardi walks in with his oracles. He might want to cast Valor here, but he decides not to. Ascardi deletes his Promethean. He's going to be chasing those oracle scouts down, trying to take those out and uh, and shut down the vision of Scardi. Scardi now sending his own Promethean forward in the main base. We do see one military barracks, one counter barracks, one mana coming up in the main base of Nullis. We see exactly the same thing as well. As the Valor does come through for Nullis onto those oracles. 
For me, I like this, but I know that a lot of Arano's players, they're not so much of a fan of this one. The reason I like this is because you get yourself... Uh, you get yourself an extra three military units, which you wouldn't normally have. Uh, but then your opponent getting his own uh, Valor, though, onto the Mamillo heroes does boost those those Mamillo up to, what is it, from 110 up to an extra 40 HP. Whereas, I mean, the Oracle Scout, 120 HP. So you've got an extra 60 HP on the Oracle heroes and the extra damage that comes through on the Mamillo, you get an extra 1.6 damage versus the... Oracle Heroes, which is 7.2. So, all in all, the stats say that Oracle Heroes being valid here, the free Oracle Heroes, mind you, not making an Oracle Hero, but the free Oracle Heroes are the uh, most valuable thing to, to value here. That's what it says on, in, on paper, mathematically. But in practice, is that actually what ends up happening? Seeing as they're a bit slower uh, and maybe a little bit more clunky, We'll have to wait and see who's going to be winning here. But at this point, Scardi, 59 population of 70, well, 64 population. He's got the population lead because he hasn't gotten himself any economic upgrades just yet. Meanwhile, Pickaxe is coming through for Nullis. So Nullis is like, yeah, I can just spend my resources, get myself my upgrades, try and find an economic edge here. Playing defensively is always going to be the game plan as Scardi, he's got himself out already. A couple of those Prometheans as he can push forward, get some good damage done onto this position as the hero oracle, uh, not hero oracle, but the hero villager going to pop in and out of this location trying to get in there as we do see a shockwave coming through. Will Scardi just retreat away? It looks like he will. Scardi, he's done this before. He doesn't like trading shockwave for shockwave. He'd rather take the damage, pull away and try and get more of a value shockwave a little bit later when it matters a little bit more. As now the citizen can just move off of that hunt. Scardi had no real reason fighting there anymore. And Nullis has found himself a slight advantage. There's another Valor coming down. The Citizen's coming through here. Uh, and obviously, Scardi going to be able to drop his own Valor fairly shortly as Scardi pushes forward. We'll see those that the army is in position. And yet again, Nullis playing a very, very cool, calm, collected defense here at this point. And as we know in the mirror matchup, defense is king. But what can you do when you're defending? When your opponent is defending like this, the Scotty is doing it. You don't attack where the army is. Try and find different places to cause uh, cause damage while keeping your army nice and safe. We do see the army pushing through here. The village is simply just going to be garrisoning uh, as Scotty searching around. And he will be taking little bits of chip damage for doing this as well. So it is a risky thing. Not going to be losing all too much, but the chip damage does end up being a, a problem. Ascardi now 103 population. Nullis is at 94 population. It's only still only two military buildings up for Scardi. As Nullis might want to keep, be considering dropping a, a third military building here as well. Same two for Scardi at around this point. It's kind of becomes uh, an important thing to do that. As the army of Scardi can take out a mana here for free as his army has distracted on this position. The Oracle Hero here just... Hanging out, just checking out what's happening. A little bit of a shank coming through as well. As we do indeed see that mana going down. And Scardi got to be very careful with his Kara Ballister as Nala is simply just running straight onto it as we do indeed see the Shockwave coming down to keep that one alive. A couple of units going to be falling here as Nala runs straight through the firing squad of Scardi's army with that, uh, with that Shockwave coming in. But... After all is said and done, Nullis not going to be too unhappy with that shockwave usage because now he's going to have the next available shockwave to have an advantage in the next fight. So we do see Scotty searching for trying to find some sort of an advantage here in this position as Nullis in the defensive position gets that shot off, does snipe one Mermillo before retreating away. The second town center, though, is already coming through here for Scotty. How is that possible with Nullis getting the economic upgrades first? I don't know. It's 13 villages apiece. Nullis doesn't have any uh, gold in the bank at the moment. Scardi's villages are just working incredibly, incredibly fast. He's also throwing farms down as well. No farms up yet for Nullis. I don't know how he's afforded everything. Obviously, the kill loss here for Scardi has gone very, very well. Very, very much in favor of Scardi here thus far. That's how he's managed to construct that sort of a lead. It must be. Nullis has also got the citizen lead here as well. As you do see a couple of units getting picked off. Scotty retreats back. Promethean offspring coming through. 
And he gets sniped down here if it stays too long, it seems. As the army over here still distracting. Promethean off spring, spring getting taken out. Skadi now two town centers. And Nullis is going to have to figure out how to continue here because Skadi, he's going to have more population. He's going to start getting more income. He does have to pay for the town center. That's the big one. And it looks like Nullis here, he might be deciding, instead of getting the town center, to try and get Heroic Age. And there is a world where far second town center versus one town center Heroic kind of goes the wayside of the Heroic Age user because you get the Dryads. That covers the population deficiency you've got. We do see the the, uh, the raid coming through here as the citizen get pulled back. The units are already in a defensive position. Skadi still pushing forward here as well. The Promethean able to push in and take out those Karabalista here. Nullis wants to. He can kind of speed walk those units away. It's always kind of a way to keep your Karabalista nice and safe as Nullis has created a nice choke point. Nullis' food is skyrocketed at the moment, but he does need to move out onto a second gold mine here if he wants to get to the Heroic Age. Meanwhile, Skadi at this point he still doesn't even have himself plow. And he's thrown farms down. He's thrown farms down. He doesn't even have plow. I think there's hunt still over here as well. As the army still pushing forward, trying to take down Kyra Ballister and everything else under this position is Nullis. I mean, he's defending it fine. He's still sitting at full population. Scotty trying to create a fight here out of nothing. As the Mamillo is still distracting each other up on the top side there. And now Scotty has to pull back, let up the pressure, as it looks like Nullis has held on. Villager differential now in the favor of Skadi as Nullis drops his second town center in the main base. Nullis still hasn't dropped farms here. He's got a ton of villagers on gold. He's going to be able to go to that next age really, really soon. He does have an armor in his main base. Yes, he does. So second town center on the way. Heroic age on the way. Skadi a long way from having the food to get to the next age. He also needs to rebuild his population back up to 130 here. He does find himself a little bit of hunt on this position, but not much left. There's also the hunt over here that he can grab. Skadi, with all the pressure he's put on, deciding not to get his hunt is an interesting decision. Obviously, he's just playing the safety game. He doesn't want his uh, he doesn't want his villagers to be able to be raided like he is raiding Nullis here. And he just causes a little bit of a, a delay there. They are Getting closer and closer to becoming through as Skadi pushes through the town center is almost up here as Skadi hasn't really paid attention to that. Military barracks are, are coming through. So that means Arcus, that means Contarius can get built out of them very, very shortly here. Skadi does turn around and takes this fight nicely as Nullis going to be pulling back with the Karabalas to rolling through here. So he does snipe down one hero, Mamilla, and then simply retreats away. He is controlling his army very, very nicely here in this game. Snellis so pulls back underneath this gold mine. We do see a big shockwave coming through as Thea does pop up. There's the Stymphalian bird up as well. Snellis so now has his second town center. Here is Citizen in this position. What is that doing here? And Ken Skardin up. Change the script here, as he is now at 130 pop, but he has to deal with the hero Stymphalion, the, the, sorry, the Stymphalion bird has to be dealt with by those hero terminals, which gets sniped down really, really fast. The Dryads are getting pumped out here with all the villagers in the world on that gold mine there. More villagers up on this top position here can grab that gold mine up there as well. The Dryads are just too strong at this point now for Skadi to deal with. As Skadi has to pull back, he's still, he's in his main base, he's got his farms, he's got no real hunt left. I mean, if we were to take a look at what's at the bottom corner, I can almost guarantee that there's Hunt there. And he knows that there's Hunt over here as well. In fact, let's take a quick look. There's a, there's a couple of there's a couple of Hunt dots there. Whether that's Elephant or just a Hyena or not, I don't know. There's Nullis now pushing forward. Going to be looking for some sort of an advantage. Scotty does have the Citizen advantage. And Nullis has to build his farms here. There is still Hunt in this back corner, though, for... Nullis, he's still managing to delay those farms as much as he can. And that's so important. This citizen at this top corner here has been very, very sneaky. Maybe sitting on a gold mine is not the best of ideas, though. If you want to sneak a, a citizen forward, put him onto a back wood line there or something like that. And you can start putting, like, sky passages or something there as well. Scotty pulls back into his main base. He's trying to get himself the resources to get to that next age. Walls coming up over here to try and defend that gold for as long as he possibly can. 
There's the Stymphalion Bird moving forward the town center. Watchtowers could potentially come up here as well. Niles doesn't care about this. He's got the uh, he's got the Dryads. They're so strong at this point in the game. As Niles pulls underneath the town center here, trying to hold on. So we do see that hero citizen was sniped down as well by Nullis. He's got the palace up. The Mamillo searching around for stuff to kill there as well. Not going to be able to find all too much as it does look like that Stymphalienburg getting closer and closer to falling. But it's doing so much damage sitting under this position. Watchtower's coming through here. Fiscardi is he's trying to pump out every unit under the sun. It looks like he's still only got like three military buildings here as well. The Watchtowers will come through. That should force... Nullis out of the main base for the time being, though. And it looks like the Citizen, they're still all built for Scardi. So five Citizen advantage is a big income advantage. One does go down there, but a five Citizen advantage is a big Citizen advantage. Getting kind of closed at the moment. But Scardi says he simply just cannot continue here in this game as Nullis with the, uh, the much more... I don't know how to put this, but a calculated approach to the Uranus mirror, the vital importance of the heroic age in this matchup, I don't think can be understated here. And I think Nullis has just shown that. Grabbing this early second town center in this matchup, and we have seen other Uranus mirrors where Uranus players haven't going for that early second town center instead of favoring the heroic cage and then getting the town center saying, well, it's better to get the Dryads and the Symphalian Birds out than getting the town center up because you just can't hold if you get stuck in the classical age, which is what we saw here from Scardi. However, I think if Scardi didn't throw these farms down, he would have gotten to the heroic age and been in a better position here. But because he put these farms down and he didn't try and get himself this hunt here, this hunt over here, he found himself in a bit of a difficult position. Anyways, well played by Nullis. Gets one game back. It is game point for Scardi going into game number four still. So Nullis, he's got to scramble, scramble his way back in. Can he complete the reverse or can he get to the reverse sweep opportunity? We'll have to wait and see. If you guys are enjoying this, please consider hitting the follow on the Twitch. If you're on the YouTube, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next game.